I am Chris Wiglino. I am here with Sequire Spotlight with Foresight Autonomous um, and Oren Baron trading under the symbol FRSX. Oren, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Chris. Thank I you. appreciate it. So who has a car that drives by itself? I I do. I love driving my car. Uh, uh, actually, I don't even drive anymore. Uh, I just, every time I'm on the freeway, I turn on the Tesla on autopilot, and I uh, I think that thing drives better than I ever could. It certainly drives better than my wife does, hands down. Um, so I, uh, I think this technology is revolutionizing the way that uh, cars are going to be driven and where, the way that other uh, pieces of equipment are going to be driven. So I think that your business is in a good spot. Tell us oh, about... Tell us about the difference between your technology, uh, what you guys are working on, and other technologies that are out there. Okay. Again, thank you, Chris. My thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Um, I think to, to, to emphasize the point, foresight is uh, focusing on a stereoscopic vision. So eventually, stereoscopic vision is like the human being vision, right? It works well, so we say, why not copy-paste? So it means that like the human being vision, we can see the world in a three dimension uh, perspective. And most, what most important is that we can identify any type of object. You know, we were just speaking about like there is a tire on the highway. Would your car identify and autonomously uh, break the, you know, hit the brakes? This was the problem with, the, uh, with it right now is, you know, I trust it to drive. But if there's ever an object on the road, you know, a box or something, and something, right? If you're and you're in the autonomous driving, that it won't move out of the way, and you need to be very careful. You know, there's online many videos of such accidents that the autonomous vehicle didn't identify the object because you know it was unknown. There are multi objects potentially that can be on the road hazard. So what we bring is a 3D perception, stereoscopic vision. And in other words, it means we identify any type of object. And this is the challenge. The challenge is eventually for a full autonomous vehicle to be able to have a full perspective of what is going on around the vehicle, take decisions in real time, but take accurate and right decision. And our technology enables this by using uh, foresight cameras in a stereoscopic binocular uh, configuration. What's the difference between these cameras and regular cameras? Like, it ha what makes it so it sees like the human eye? Eventually, a camera is a camera. Right. What makes it different is how you utilize the capabilities of a camera. A uh, monocular, uh, monocular cameras usually are working or operating based on classification. It means a very sophisticated AI. You train the system like you have an object. And if you have like 80% match, matching, you say, ah, okay, this is a pedestrian. This is a vehicle. But if you didn't train the camera to identify the object, then you will, uh, you know, drive over the tire. But in our technology, we're using a pair of cameras. Like the human being vision. And we are creating a depth map, a 3D perception. Of course, we can classify the object, but what, what, what most important is that we first know that there is an object. And because of that, our uh, strategy focus is also not just on passenger vehicles, but heavy machinery, agriculture, defense vehicles, where, object, where are the conditions are off-road conditions. There are trees, rocks, there are multi-objects you know, around you, which you cannot classify and train the system. There we, that's where our system operates wonderfully and accurately, and we are capable to create a segmentation of the world around you and enable the, even in an off-road condition, you know, you don't have a, a you need to, to identify the drivable paths. How do you do it in the off-road, in the field, when a tractor, you know, needs to, to operate? That's where we come in because we built a segmentation, we built a 3D perception, a depth map, and enabling the, the, the vehicle to operate in a semi-autonomous or autonomous uh, config manner. What's the history of the, how did you get into this? How did, how, you know, were you in the, 
camera identification business before and it moved into autonomous driving? Like, how did how did it work? Like, what was the, the legacy of the business? Uh, the legacy of the business, you know, is a uh, stereoscopic solution are already there. Companies such as Continental, Itachi, Subaru, they're already developing stereoscopic uh, solution. I agree, it wasn't popular until now because when you are using a stereoscopic uh, vision, you have one challenge, is calibrating the cameras. Cameras need to be calibrated at any given time in real time. Foresight is a unique feature, which is auto calibration. In real time, our algorithm can identify the situation that the camera are out of calibration and recalibrate it in real time. This is extremely important. Imagine that an autonomous tractor is driving in a field. The vibration and shocks, the camera will be out of calibration. Our algorithm in real time, in the background, can recalibrate the system at any given time. This is the game changer. That's the game changer. So, I mean, a lot of coders, uh, how many people are on the team? How many developers are, are working on this? Well, we are still, a, you know, a modest company, <laughs> a startup company, a true startup company. Uh, we have about more than 100 uh, employees, but most of them are skilled uh, engineers from hardware, software, algo, those kind of engineering fields, um, and with a lot of, you know, experience in, in the fields of telescoping vision, computing vision. And so who, who are your customers? Who's buying this product from you right now? Actually, we, we are not target. you know, we, initially we started targeting the passenger vehicle, the, the, the traditional OEM. But I agree, you know, if someone, if one will claim, you know, that the automotive, the passenger vehicle sales cycle is very long. Like if you start in a project with an OEM, it will take five to seven years until your sales source will be on the vehicle. So this one is one of our target market targets, but we are also targeting the heavy machinery, agriculture, logistic vehicle in airport, uh, where the sales cycle is very short, two to three years, uh, where there is less regulations. So the implementation and uh, you know a go live uh, is quicker. That's where we are targeting. By the way, we are also working uh, with defense companies. You know, defense, defense uh, vehicle, military vehicles are also looking to be to work auton in an autonomous uh, configuration. Uh, initially, they uh, looked into lidar sensors, but lidar is a meeting sensor. So, in a you know, in a defense military scene, you cannot work with a meeting sensor. That's where cameras are stepping in in a very uh, useful uh, way. That's interesting. So in, in a defense situation, they can't use LIDAR. They got, uh, everybody would be able to know where it is. You know. <laughs> um, interesting. So this, uh, has there been interest from the defense sector? Is that, Are you guys getting We already, yeah, we already there. We have a, a few a commercial agreements. Some of them are already in actual sales. Need to emphasize that we are using two types of uh, cameras. If you're looking on the light spectrum, there is the traditional camera like on your iPhone, you know, the CMOS, the visible light cameras, but we are also creating a stereoscopic vision from thermal infrared cameras. This is a very unique solution. You know, usually you think about infrared cameras, a very expensive camera, you know, for a very high end solution. No, today, infrared cameras are integrated in passenger vehicles. It's, it's, it's cost-effective, and it's a non-emitting technology. That's why it's been implemented in, in by the, the DFES, agriculture, and heavy machinery company, OEMs. So what's, the, uh, what's on the roadmap for you guys this year? You know, what, where do you envision kind of uh, KPIs that people can watch out for you guys? What are the things that you hope to accomplish uh, throughout the rest of this year? Well, we, we are uh, geographically, first of all, uh, we are working uh, all around the, the globe. We're focusing mainly, of course, in the U.S., but also in Asia, Japan, India, China. Uh, we already completed successfully multi-POCs, full of concept projects, demonstrating our technology uh, capabilities 
as I mentioned, also in the agriculture and heavy machinery and private passen passenger vehicles. So looking ahead, I think that anyone will, who will follow Foresight will see that in the terms of sales cycles, we are moving to the next phase of a design win towards mass production. And the bottom line, it means, the bottom line means that we are very close to sales and revenue. That's great. So really getting to revenue wrecking and exactly. having some revenue come in the door this year. We expect in 2024, 2025 to be the, the breakthrough year. And do you think that once the wheels, you know, once the, it starts to kick in, that it, people are adopting this technology, exactly. that it's just going to expand rapidly? Exactly. So, okay. And uh, uh, what kind of reception are you getting when you're going into the heavy, you know, the agriculture uh, product development teams that are putting together these, uh, uh, this large equipment? Are they receptive to the idea? Are they, because I would imagine that they don't have the technology themselves to do this. They need somebody like you that's been working on this to execute. Or are they working on uh, their own things as well? There are, there are already running projects. Uh, there are other sensors, LiDAR, radar, which are tested by this, uh, you know, heavy machinery. We get the, uh, the feedback that it is a very challenging environment. Think about a mining zone, how much dust, how much, you know, walking in a full darkness. And we get the feedback that we get from the OEM that we are looking for different sensors that will be able to operate 24-7 in a very harsh uh, environment uh, weather and very, uh, and, you know, poor lighting conditions. And that's where the cameras and especially the infrared cameras steps in and are doing much better than any other sensor that was tested and evaluated by now. So we get excellent feedback from, uh, you know, those OEMs, and, and therefore we, we already engage uh, in several projects. So there will come a day when these machines can run all night, all day on farming land without uh, the need for human interaction. Exactly. I, I, you know, I've been, I've seen some uh, autonomous farming uh, projects. You know, everything is, you know, they are, the animals are not autonomous yet, but, <laughs> <laughs> but a, everything is, you know, looking for 24 seven, you know, the population, the worldwide population is, was growing. So you need to produce more food. You need to, so you need, yeah, it's a good market to go after. It's a good market to go. And it's, it's less cost uh, sensitive market, you know, because such a tractor, autonomous tractor or mining or dump truck in the mining, they, they are less, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, sensitive to cost. Right. Not that we are expensive, but it's a more, but it's, it's, a, it's a bigger it's, purchase. And, exactly. And they're getting the value of running this thing without, you know, they're paying the humans that are having to drive it. So this is going to save them the, the money to have to do that. Exactly. Well, well, thank you very much for being here with us today. It's uh, Foresight Autonomous, symbol F-R-S-X. Oren, thank you. My pleasure, Chris. Thank you. I appreciate you coming here to talk to us today.